so I want to take Jesus to them. And now, may I ask you to do this for me? Way overseas, and you know, in the papers and things when I'm over there, and the rich doctors and, and so forth are challenging the gospel when I have to stand there and the wings are going hot. Can I depend on the people of lying and around about to be praying for me? Are you good? Thank you. Thank you, Matt. In some ways, we are meet and God will reward you before that even for doing it. I was certainly thankful to the, the board that let us have this beautiful little auditorium here. It's a pretty little place. And it's so marvelously arranged and the acoustic seems to be so good. And your audience is drawn right up to you. I like that. I like the close feeling. Some of the best meetings I ever had was in cottage chair meetings where we were sitting right around each other, fellowshipping. And this little auditorium for a place of the size produces that. And I think it's a lovely little place. I was cutting a picture out that I found in the paper to take with me. And to the custodians and for all their kindness, may the Lord richly bless you, gentlemen and brethren. Then I was just asked or said to me tonight by my son just a few moments ago that they had taken a love offering for me. Well, I told Dr. Bale he couldn't do that just to put it in on his expenses. And they said the census is already met. Now, I want to thank you kindly. If there's anything I've tried to do, is keep away from money. For I was born poor, and my people are poor, and that's the way I want to be like I am now. And I, I never took an offering in my life myself. Never took one up in my life. I remember one time at home, I was going to take an offering with poor people. And I, you know, when you get to a place you can't make things and eat together, you can't I do it all the time. So I was working and I said to the wife, you know, honey, I'm going over and take up an offering tonight. She said, I'm going to watch the door. <laughs> and so she sat back in the meeting and now not as the people I've passed there 17 years without one thing. Not because they didn't want to pay me, because I was young, able to work, so I, I do right now. If I could just wait on them and see do the same thing, I love to work. And I went over to take up the offering, and I said, we didn't have any offering place, so I said, folks, I kind of, a little bit of place, I just can't make the room meet. I'm going to take a little offering, somebody's got some slippers if you'd like to help me. And I said, brother, one of us, we called him Uncle Jim. Get my hat, will you? He went got my hat, and I looked right down at him, a little old lady. He was in the air right now. One of those little aprons with the pockets on the inside. Did you ever see one? What color can touch you from now? Yeah. And so, it's this little apron, and she picked out some of these little pocket books and snaps on the top, and began to reach down for those nickels. Oh, I just couldn't do it. Oh, I said, I was just teasing you. <laughs> I didn't mean it. And my wife looked at me. And you know, there was an old man who used to follow me to many of his mighty students. He was two of them. He had a long beard. His name was Lyon. John Lyon. How many of them know John Lyon? Well, my dear, pardon, please be kind of. And he, the old man, I used to get about wearing those beards. He was a movie star, if you all didn't know that. He was once the movie star. He rode the famous darling in the rainy barn baby circus. And was a Catholic and was converted into the a Christian religion and was a uh, apostolic faith. And he's gone to glory now at 80 something years old. And he rode an old bicycle down and gave it to me from Dwight Black, Michigan. Oh, it was in bad shape. But I went down and got 10 cents and bought me a can of paint and painted it all up and sold it. Got enough money to pay the bed off. And I, so I never was an offering. I wish that this wouldn't have to be done. But I know that that's a portion of your living. I know that you're poor people like I am. And perhaps maybe that might have to squeeze the baby's teeth when you And I realize that. 
But friend, to the best of my knowledge, I promise you, that it will not go to foolishness, for the best of my knowledge to the kingdom of God. And may God bring it back to you, multiply, deep step, run down, open down, a hundredfold is my prayer. Now, how many people are here from out of town? Let's see again. Is there anybody here from line? Line of people raising hands. Oh yes, yes, yes. I was just such a massive. We are happy to be in Lima, aren't we, outsiders? Amen. We think you're wonderful. We think you got some fine ministers and some fine merchants and just a lovely city. And we pray that God will bless you exceedingly abundantly. And now, tonight, I am very hoarse. Usually, a minister just can still preach about once a day. Did you know that preaching is harder on you than most any kind of manual labor that you could do? I've seen that estimated and break them down, and I believe that it is compared, I think that 20 minutes of preaching under inspiration takes more from the physical body than eight hours of a third woman. That's how hard it is. That's inspirational thinking. So we ask you now and thank you. And if I've left anybody, oh, the organ is the piano. There's just so many of them. And today I was just speaking to different ones and places. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe I see a sweet little old couple that usually calls me long distance. And they're sick, and I don't believe God failed one time. And I don't know, but isn't that the Reverend and Mrs. Steve sitting right there? Raise up your hand. I want you all to see an old veteran and his wife, way in the 70s or 80s, still preaching the gospel. Will you stand up just a minute, brother and sister, to Let's say praise the Lord for God's goodness to them. That's very much appropriate. God bless them. Ray, God bless you, sister and brother. Way in the years of 80s and still preaching the gospel. Oh, I told him that's wonderful. I pray that God will bless them to see me abundantly. And now, they were probably out preaching before I was born. And you see how honored I feel of having them. You know, usually when they were old, the general public seems to pass you by. But they were such a good girl, one you, good by all and tired. You'll never leave them at the station. I want to read tonight from the Blessed Word, and then just for a short time, lean towards, and we will pray for the sick. And I want to thank you once more for something else. Praying for me last night, the first time I ever got a prayer line through like that, and I don't know when. The last reason, because I just went to that all the time. And how the testimonies are for him to say it seemed wonderful. What you need is a very big tent setting out here in about a four or five weeks survival so you can just stay right with it until it's over. I want to read from the book of St. Luke tonight, from the 18th chapter of St. Luke, and beginning with the 42nd verse. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and glorified him, glorified God, and all the people, when they saw it, they were praying to praise unto God. And may the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. And may the Almighty Jehovah ever bless. Usually this is the night when more is done than any other night in the meeting. Because the great strain, it's the, the anticipation, the waiting, the expectancy, that's usually what brings the Holy Spirit right now. Oh, how I pray with all my heart that there will not be a feeble one among us in an hour of the night. I pray not one sinner in the building, may every sinner be saved, every backslider come back to the house of God. Is my humble, sincere prayer. 
Jesus had just been speaking to the disciples and about sacrilegious, how the, there was a, a publican went to the temple to pray, and a self-righteous man stood there, and how he had all of his good deeds that he could quote to the Lord. How I thank thee that I'm not like this publican or like ordinary man. How I pay my tithes and fast and so forth. But Jesus was teaching them that all those things were all right and they had their place. But then those things are not the real things. They're not the religious, they're religion, but they're not salvation. If we depend upon those things to merit for our salvation, we would go in by work and wouldn't need the Lord Jesus. But we have to solemnly depend up on him, and I'm so glad that everyone can come. If religion only needs to build a church to sacrifice and to be sincere, God would be unjust to can do anything because he done everything religious that Abel did. Everything that Abel did religious, same did the same. Both boys sincere. Both boys made an altar. Both boys made a sacrifice. Both boys knelt down. Both boys prayed. Both boys worshiped. So if worship, sincerity, belong to the church, and all those things are all God requires, then he would be unjust to condemn sin for things of the very same thing that Abel did. But all of them was work of his hands. And it's not by works, it's by the grace of God who is saved. Abel never worked, he just believed on him to justify the ungodly. And his sacrifice was received. I see tonight start at the gate of Jericho. Jericho was one of the lowest cities of the world, way down in the valleys of the Jordan. And it's a pathetic scene as you look at it. There is a blind man by the name of Bartimaeus, and he's sitting by the wall of Jericho. And it was pretty hard on the beggars of those days because there were many of them. There were lepers, there were cripples, lame, halt, blind, all types of beggars. And as a man who was a little more blessed, that could spare a coin now and then, when he slept his home at morning, the first beggar he met and perhaps give him the coin, and maybe could not afford any more through the day. So it was a custom that beggars would stay near the gate. But when the traveler or the businessman coming to his business in the city would drop the coin to them, that they might have a livelihood. And perhaps this man being gone for many years, if he could had a been an operation could been performed on his eyes, he could not afford it, for he was a beggar. But very much in doubt whether physicians of that day could have helped him or the physicians of the day. Now, blindness is a horrible thing, and I is a valuable thing. And so, while he was sitting there, let's just take a little picture now and go down there with John Barnabas so we can get the real kernel of what we wish to talk on for the next 15, 20 minutes. John Barnabas is sitting by the gate perhaps in the sunshine as the spirit rays of the Palestinian sun shining on him by the wall. Let's think that he was studying, meditating. You know, the way to find God is to meditate upon God. Think of God. David spoke of it. How he would bind the Lord on his bedpost and how he would meditate there in day and night. 
If we notice it was the disciples on the road to Emmaus, that while they were speaking to each other concerning the Lord Jesus, that he stepped right out of the booth and walked with them. If our minds would be more taken up on God and on the things pertaining to God, it would be so much easier to live the victorious life in Christ. He would be with us. He would have fell our ego while he was thinking, meditating to God, the beautiful Rebecca come out the water with camel just to answer to what he was asking God. And his son, Barnabas, shut at the gate. He was a beggar, ragged, studying with his little rags wrapped around him, probably a middle-aged man with tiny heart, but he had a family, a wife, a little girl. And as he sat there in the sunshine, I can just imagine his mind drifting back to another day. A day that when things were better for him, when he was a little boy, as he went over the TV in the years, and I can think that maybe perhaps one of his favorite times was when he, after a midday meal was over, as a little brown-eyed youth boy frolicked along in the south wind to get through the fields. He would come in at a certain hour to his mama, a beautiful young Jew. And as his favorite thing was, before he took in his afternoon nap, was to hear his hell stories of the Bible. That seems to be so interesting to any little boy that's got good character in him. The Bible stories. It's just too bad that mothers today don't take more time to talk to the children on those things. I'm sure we didn't have so much juvenile delinquency if this was it. And as the little bright eyes would look up into Mama's face, and how he would enjoy the different stories that she would read from the Bible to him. The Old Testament, of course, because that's all they had. And perhaps one of the Leading stories that he liked so well was the one of the great mighty prophet Elijah. How did Elijah in his day, how did he went up to Mount Carmel and there was a Shunammite woman, a Gentile. He thought he was a great prophet and she was a rich woman and she could help this prophet, so she built herself a little house for him, a little room, a little tree. And she placed in there a bed, a little stool, and some water for his feet, and a picture to drink from to show kindness. And so one day when he found all this kindness, he sent the hazel and his servant to pick her up, to bring her in to where he was. And he said, could I do a favor for you? You've been so kind to me. She could I to me the potion of uh, that you're living and uh, help me to have a little place to rest. And you did this because if you had respect unto my God, could I speak to the king for you or to the chief captain? She said, no, I dwell among my people. Everything's all right. And Jehosha said to him, he doesn't have any children. And perhaps Elijah in his prayer saw what the Lord was going to do. And he said, go tell her that about this time next year, according to life, he is going to embrace a son. And the little boy was born in the home when his husband was old. And he was a lovely little lad. How little Barnabas, his eyes were dripping and his sparkle. When you can hear a this little boy born. And how mommy would baby him and play with him. And then one day it came to pass when he was about the age of Barney Mayor's son, was out in the field with his papa. And it must have been a sunstroke. It was about noon, noon, 11 o'clock. 
And the little boy began to cry at my head, my head. And the father, being busy in the harvest, sent a servant, took the little lad home, and the mother laid him on her lap, and he died. Oh, what a tragedy. But to this Canaanite woman, there was no defeat. She had something in her heart. She touched the little dead brown of the boy and laid him up on the bed of Elijah. What a place to play. Just right. Taking him out of him on his own little crib, up on their bed, but took him around the house to the little prophet's chamber and opened the door and laid him where the servant of God had laid him. Quite a wise woman. And she called her husband and she said, I must go find the man of God. I like that. Oh, he said, if you didn't need me in the Sabbath, but she said, it'll be all right. Nothing in her heart. Everything will be well. So he started a meal and he told the servant, he did, said, drive and don't stop till I call you to and as they neared the mount where the prophet living in his cave, he walked out the side of the cave and he looked and he said to the servant, Here comes that senior man. Go and meet her. She sees that she's in a rush. Oh, they're just flipping the little deer and he's a going. Go and meet her. And say unto her, Is all well? with me. It's all well with thy husband. It's all well with the baby. And this servant ran and met her, and she said, all is well. Her baby said her husband planted, but all is well. Wow. She needs God for any service, the prophet. She means she can hear from God. And she won't even know why that her baby had been taken. So she runs up close and Elijah looks at her again. And he said, her heart is full of grief and God has hid it from me. You know, there's a wonderful thing. God don't tell his prophets everything. He just tells them what he wants them to know. Not everything. They can do nothing in themselves. Just what God shows them, that's what they do. Could you imagine? Isaac setting blind and blessing Jacob and the city of Esau. Could you imagine Jacob holding Joseph's coat for 40 years, bloody, thinking that an animal killed it and being a prophet? He God just revealed to his prophet that what he wants them to know. Nothing else. Prophets are not infallible people. Prophets are not angels. They are men. In St. James, the fifth chapter, it said Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. He had his ups and downs. But he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. Then he goes to say the exceptional fervent heir of a righteous man that they have met. And God had not revealed to Elijah. And she ran up to his feet and fell down and made knowing everything that had happened. Now Elijah knew that God dwelt in him. So he said to Jehoshaphat, Take my staff. And go lay it on the top. Now don't stop along the road for a little chat here and there. If any man sees you, don't see him back. That's the trouble with the church today with this message. They're stopping back along the road. Little weddings and social parties and card parties and picnics and story circles and so forth. Too much of the world has entered into the Carrying out the blessed message. Oh, I hope you see it. Notice, if any man who 
Only two feet in that back that go straight to the bar. That's what we need. Straight to the world. None of us hanging around for this, that, or other. But right to the point. Notice. Then what happened? But you know, I think that's where Paul got taking hands of Sister Athens from the, his body. Elijah knew that everything he touched was blessed because God was in him. That's what the woman touched in him as a garment of Jesus. He knew God was in him. But you know, the woman's faith wasn't in the staff, it was in the prophet. So she said, as the Lord liveth, I'll not leave you. I'm just going to hang around. She had something in her heart and she was staying with it. That's the thing. If God has answered a faith in your heart that he's going to give you the Holy Spirit, pray right with it. If he's touched something in your heart during the meeting that he's going to hear it, pray right with it. Don't let nothing move it. Call everything that happens contrary to that. Call it wrong, cast it aside, and look to the promise. He said, I'm going to stay right with you. And the prophet got tired of perhaps ever hanging around. So he goes and gets his mantle and throws it over and he gives up his loins. And there he went, the woman following him. So he so went ahead and went into the dead baby, laying his stick upon the baby, but nothing happened. Why? The mother didn't believe it. If it had happened, if the mother would have believed it. But she didn't know about the sick, but she did know about the prophet. So she then what took in place? Where comes the prophet up with the mother, her eyes right on him, and look what a condition it is. The neighbors are screaming in a way, and a heartbroken father screaming out in the street, Oh, my boy, my boy. All tore up. The prophet just goes to his own little chamber and closes the door behind him. Just laying on the bed, they laid a little stiff cold farm of a baby dead several hours. And the prophet walked back and forth to and fro up and down in the room. I just love that. Just walking to and fro, waiting on the Lord. He that waits upon the Lord shall renew his strength. He'll mount up like an eagle. He'll run and not be weary. He'll walk and not faint. And he walks to and fro, waiting on the Lord. After this, something must have struck the prophet when he knows the Holy Spirit was on his body. He ran to the child, put his hands on his hands, put his nose against his nose. And the baby flew seven times and come to life. Outside, they went. What a happy home. And how little Barnaby must have loved that story. And as he sat there remembering it in his mind, and how the great conquer Joshua and many of the other stories. But alas, first he fell. The sun has moved over, a shade has come over. He curls around in his round eyes and sits down again. Somehow he never got a coin, maybe, that morning. Perhaps he's going to tell his little girl when he goes home. She perhaps maybe wanted to see if she could get a dress. His poor wife maybe hadn't had one in a long time. And he was ragged and he couldn't even get sleep for this meal. And now maybe left her hungry this morning. And now what can he do? Nothing to eat. And laying it and sitting there. But there's one thing he had was memory of a day gone by. And then he remembered that not 30 feet from where he was sitting, the great prophet Elijah and Elijah walked down that road together arm in arm. Oh, I can imagine he hears him within his heart. Oh, 
Oh, if I would have only been studying here then. I would have raised and set all the prophets of God, these great mighty prophets, who stood Jehovah for me. But oh, the days of miracles is past, so my priest tells me. That was Jehovah in a day gone by. But think of it, one day, right down where I'm sitting at his thirty feet, with those two mighty prophets that walked right down to that garden and left the garden and opened it up. Surely, in his heart, he would say, that Jehovah couldn't die. And of the great coming out of the children of Israel, when their elder son was killed because there was no blood on the limb of the door, would be another favorite story for him. And also, of just a few hundred yards in one city, the great mighty Joshua delivering the people into the promised land, walked down to the Jordan, taking the out the word of God in the front of him, and it opened up. And his people walked across on dry land. Oh, in his heart, we are still the people of God. We are circumcised according to the precepts of the Testament. But they tell me that Jehovah doesn't do those things anymore. You know, time has been changed too much. I say that with respect. And then he sat again, not over 200 yards from where he was sitting then. One day when the mighty Joshua, the great prince, was walking out of doing the walls of Jericho before the great battle, he saw a man standing with a drawn sword. He had also heard his mother tell that story, let it appear out of the Bible. And as he stood with his sword drawn, Joshua's eyes caught him. Where did he come from? He just appeared. And he was a man with his sword drawn. And Joshua drew his sword and went to meet him. And when Joshua went to meet him, he said, Are you for us? Are you for the enemy? And the man spoke back to Joshua and said, No, I am the captain of the host of the Lord. Just 200 yards from where he was sitting. Little did he know that that same captain of the Lord's host was not 200 yards from him right there. And as he began to come into Jerusalem, or to Jericho, there began to be two clatters everywhere. People running, at the wrong noises, people talking, different broken subjects, some one way, some another. He listened. He was blind. And as he listened, what is this? And after a while, there comes a scream of criticism. People are, where comes that fanatic? Where comes that man that speaks against our priests and our church? Let's not let him enter the city. Others come. And above all, he heard the great roar of his priests, which said, Oh, you Galileans, you who can raise a dead man, we've got a whole graveyard full of them up here on the hill. Come up and raise some of them. That was the kind of mockery he got. That's the kind he gets today. But Jesus never heard them. Perhaps rotten cabbages over like the age, throwing at him and making fun of him and said, You who has done all these miracles, let me see you do something. Ha oh, oh. ha. Who sees prayers? There's nothing to this fanatic. He doesn't join up with our shoes. 
with all my heart that this one who persecuted and made fun of be your son, I believe he is the son of David. And something happened. That John Dutton's face touched the Lord Jesus. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The insignificant one that they tried to make him keep still. But his face touched the Lord Jesus. That's the woman that touched his garment. He turned, looking at him, and said, Bring him here. And when he got there, he said, What is it that I should do for you? The Lord that I might receive my sight. He said, Thou faith has saved you. If your faith was strong enough in God to call the person to lead me to call back to you, your faith is sufficient for your need. And as he turned and goes on, John Bonham will just stand there. As you have the black world before you become light, you can see him and found the Lord who had to rejoice and praise God for his sight. Not long ago, I was reading a little story of him. He said that his wife and his baby, little girl, just about 10 years old, he had never seen him. He had been blind for years. The story might have been fiction, I do not know. But they said that in those days, Paul Brian Bonnemere said that the gate, he had two little turtle doves, the brown little tumbles over each other. They intervened uh, to a trap to two of them, so he could get coins for this. Something, if you've ever been to India and so forth, you see that the beggars have to have some attraction or they want to attack the tears. So these little doves would tumble over each other. And one night it was said that his little girl got sick. And John Bonnie Lewis made his way around the wall and he prayed for the little girl and said, If you will let my little girl get well, God, tomorrow I'll sacrifice one of my turtle doves to you. And the little girl got well, so he did. And by and by his wife got sick. So he made a promise to sacrifice the other turtle dove. And then... His wife was well. And then another sick spell hit the home and he didn't have anything to entertain the poor spy. And he's begging with very poorly then. And he went outside to pray and he said, Lord, I only have one more thing. And that is my land. Now, you've seen the blind being led by dogs. They're praying for that person. In those days, they had a lamb that led the blind. And he said, Lord, if you will heal this case for me and let my little one live, I will sacrifice to you my lamb. That's all I got. And then it says, the child was well. And he said, on his road to sacrifice, the priest said to him, John Barnabas, where goest thou? He said, oh, priest, I am going up to the altar to sacrifice my lamb that I promised God I would do. Oh, he said, John Barnabas, you cannot give that lamb, but I'll give you some money and you buy a lamb. He said, oh, please, I never promised God a lamb. I promised God this lamb. There's a lesson there. And I hope God teaches it here. And he said, John Barnabas, thou cannot sacrifice that lamb. That lamb is your eyes. He said, Oh, peace of God, God will provide a lamb for John Barnabas' eyes if I keep my promise to him. And on this cold October day, setting troops and legs, God had provided a lamb for John Barnabas' eyes. And may I say this, my beloved friend, that same land is provided for your eyes tonight and for your sickness. This God provided land to take away your sin and your sickness. In some days we've got to stand in the presence of God to give an account for this life that you've been permitted to live. 
Not long ago, there was a great man who crossed through the Middle Eastern country. And his name is Daniel Curry. He was a, a famous revivalist. It's been 50 some odd years. And Daniel Curry, one night he said he had a dream. And he dreamed that he died and was taken up to heaven. And when he got to the gate of heaven, he, the opener of the gate came, the gatekeeper. And he said, Who art thou that is the person? He said, I am Daniel Curry. I am the evangelist to one thousand of souls in the earth for heaven. I have come to take my place and receive my mansion. So just a moment, I shall look on the book. And he went and looked at the book. And when he came back, he said, I am sorry, Mr. Curry, but I do not find your name on the book. Oh, he said, Curry, you're wrong. Go look again. And he did the second time. He said, your name is not on the book. Therefore, I cannot open these gates to you. You have no name to check. Oh, he said, what must I do? He said, sir, you might appeal your case to the great white throne judgment. If he kills him. Well, he said, I have no choice. I'll have to do that. And he said, soon as he was taking his face for a long while, and he began to get lighter, lighter, lighter. No such a place that was coming from. And he began to slow up. And so then, all of a sudden, he came to a stop. And there was the brightest light he had ever seen in all his life. It was a thousand times brighter than the midday sun. And so he heard a boy say, Daniel, hey, did you ever feel anything when you were on earth? You are here at my judgment seat. And he said, I thought I had been an honest man. But that in the presence of that life, I realized that there were some things I had pulled in a crazy deal. I didn't think about it when I was on earth, but in the presence of that life. He said, then, he said, yes, Lord, I have told. He said, Daniel Curry, did you ever tell a lie when you were in your life? He said, I thought at least I've been an honest man. But that in the presence of that life, I see a lot of things that I have told that wasn't right. He said, Lord, I have so lied. Then said the voice, come the third time. He said, Daniel Curry, was you perfect when you were on earth in your life? He said, no, Lord, I wasn't perfect. And said, my bones seemed like they were coming apart. I was listening for that great warmth blast. Then he talked for me into outer darkness. And said, just as I was sitting ready to hear that great eternal separation word, that I heard the sweetest voice I ever heard in my life. So never did I ever hear a voice like that. No mother could speak words like that. But I turned. And when I did, he said, I saw the sweetest face I ever saw in all my life. So no mother's face could look like that. And so he walked up to me and put his arm around me and said, Father, no, Daniel Curry wasn't perfect on earth in his life. But in his life, he stood for me on the earth. And now in heaven, I'll stand for him. Let all of your sins be put on my back. Oh, that's what I think for. That's what I try to persuade others for. How you want him to say, well done. I wonder who's standing for you tonight if your life could be called. Could you stand the judgment of the white throne? Just think of it right quick while we bow our heads just a moment. And if the organist will be so kind to come to the organ and play a Bible music, you will. 
with every head bowed, every eye closed, and those who know how to pray, this may be the moment when some precious soul finds its eternal destiny there. When the last knock may be knocked at the door of the heart of a person, my spirit will not always die with man. So it means to pray, Christian. And while you're praying, I'm going to ask this to be sinner, the one that knows that he could not have someone to stand for him. Do so you want him to stand for you? If you do, would you just raise your hand to him as a sign and say, God, this is my hand as a sign. I want Jesus to stand for me in the hour of my death. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, God bless you lady. God bless you, sir. God bless you. That's right. Just keep your hands up. God bless you. You say, Brother Van, is that you something? Yes. God bless you, little boy. God bless you, lady. That's right. Someone else down the bottom goes, God bless you over there. Someone who hasn't put up a hand, would you put up your hand right away and say, Jesus, I'm raising my hand. God bless you back there, God. God bless you. I know that I have nothing I could offer. For all that I have, I give. Back and to my left, will you raise your hands and stand for me, Jesus? Oh, my good hand, God bless you everywhere. And the back and the sinner. Raise your hands and say, God, be merciful to me right now. I'm making my stand for you, Christ. You will stand for me at that day. Just hands everywhere, God bless you. Oh, how the Holy Spirit moving in the day. I'm going to ask you something while the rest of them are praying. You who want to hear that voice when some morning the fog begins to come into the room and the doctor's left and said there's not a hope. You feel the hope coming up your sleeve and you know the time has come. You're leaving. Do you want him to stand there and bear you across the garden? When you're walking on these little bread of bread now, not knowing when they will break. And if you want to be sincere, and want to prove to God that you want him to put your name on the land with the blind, and to stand for you in that day, will you quietly stand to your feet while we have prayer? Everyone that wants to make that stand tonight for Christ, would you just stand on the bottom there and in the up balcony on every side? Would you, you raise up your hand? Stand up just a moment now. You make your stand up this God bless you, God bless everywhere. Just stand up and say, I'm making my stand before these people. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, I just remain standing. If you're ashamed of me before man, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father. But he that will confess me before man, him will I confess before my Father. Oh, stand. We're going to meet it. We're coming right to it. It may be before morning, but you've got to stand. Let another host stand up for you. Someone who say, I'll take my stand tonight. God bless you, stand. Someone else, stand up while we offer prayer in the presence of God. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Someone else, God bless you. God bless you, lady. God bless you. When you take your stand, say, God, I'll stand for Christ now. And oh, Christ, you promised me to stand for me on that day. How can you please your thing? When you sit in a meeting like this, where the great powers and miracles of God would be done in the Holy Spirit moving, the gospel being preached, how are you going to stand on a negative confession? Don't you want him to stand for you? When I see hell's gates opening on earth, and I see that every sinner's got to go, and Jesus steps out of the road, I want him to plead my case. He's my attorney. I won't have to face the battle. He's facing his body. So I want him to face him for you tonight. Would you stand someone else? Just before prayer, God has touched your name on the book of life as certain as you're sincere in your heart. His words cannot fail. Now let us pray for these many who are standing. 
owes Jesus who first died of your birthday. And the blind man came back to you on the road to Calvary. How wonderful you are. The little flower cannot keep its little head out from under a chip in the woods without you knowing it. A little gnat cannot light on a limb somewhere without you knowing it. The star cannot fall to the street without you knowing it. And how much more you look down tonight you see all these people standing confessing their sins and pleading for mercy and asking you to write their name on the book of life and to plead their faith for them. Certainly you see every one of them, you know their names and who they are. And now the Father has given you these. Thou hast said, No man can come to me except my Father. Well, and all the sons I've given everlasting life will raise them up at the last day. No man can cut them out of my Father's hand. So, love this. Jesus, here's what the Father is giving you tonight. These men, women, and children that are standing are love this. But the Father is giving to you, no Christ, as your servant on earth. I pray that you have every name on the book and give to them the baptism of the Holy Spirit that they may from this very night live an upright, God-fearing life before the world with a testimony that will ring out to their neighbors Make them so salty as it was until all they come up will be saved to you. Grant it, Lord. I command them to be now as the fruit of preaching the word and the love gift of the Father who is in the word. And you receive them now for thy said, He that heareth my word and be with on him that sent me has eternal life and shall never come to the judgment but pass from the judgment unto the light. In so many words, Father, they can't stand at the light of judgment. You're going to stand in their place. Never come to the judgment, but has bypassed the judgment and has eternal life through Jesus Christ. Grant these blessings to the people while we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. The Lord bless you. And then who are standing as they sit down, the Christian body side, take their hand. Won't you do it? Oh, there's something about the grand old highway. I just love the old fashioned Bible type service, don't you? The news are born in the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit hears a breeze first to the city. Now, to you who have just come, how many say for your first time, let's see your hands, the first time you get everyone in the meeting? Oh, my, just the good thing, we all don't need it once. <laughs> Every night, he says, the audience is new one. All right. Now we are going to pray for the sick and for you little children that were just coming to the kingdom of God. Do this now. Listen. Go right straight to some good church who's hallowed in the gospel. Be baptized, join that church, and live for Jesus. But I'll get to shake your hand and go away from me. Do that. I'll meet you in the morning. By a bright little star. All stars have drifted away. I'll be standing at the portal when the gates open wide. At the close of this long, weary day, I see you to the grace of God. I remember when my wife was dying, I put the last kiss on her cheek, and I told her, I'll meet you in the morning. She had to be standing to the side of the gate, screaming, Bill and I get to sit together and come to see you. I'm on my way. Years have passed and tears and stars. My shoulders are drooping out of the young twenties. Three or five year old man, man, 
Nam Thari Sabin Thani Dhoon 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 And we do not claim that when he was in book, God has already did that. Now, he was not saved just five minutes ago. He was saved 1900 years ago, but he just accepted it five minutes ago. The same way he is by him. And now to everyone that you express to the kingdom, the Bible says that Christ, Jesus Christ, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, Oh, God, the world won't see me no more, but you will see me. For I'll be with you in you to the end of the world. Did he say it? And then he said, The work that I do shall you do also. Did he say it? How long to the end of the world? Did he go and say, I am a healer? No. Not one time. He said, It's not me that does the work, it's my father that dwells in me, and he does the work. But he said in St. John 5, 19, when he was questioning about why he didn't hear some people and man talking with God on the Sabbath and whatever it is, questioning them out. He said, Daily, daily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father do. That is the Son likewise. Otherwise, Jesus just saw breathing of what the Father told him to do, then he went and done it just the way the Father said. That's the word. Is that right? Now, if he's there, he's in the door, he's the same. He does the same. Now, he doesn't have any hands on earth and out with my new hands. His eyes, our eyes, is his eyes. We are the branches, he is the vine. The vine doesn't bear fruit, it only purges the branch so it bears fruit. He gets into you and I to bear the fruit, while he punishes the spirit and the power. And now we're going to call some people to the platform. And I want each and every one of you, I was going to start a line like I had last night, but it's too late. However, I believe the boy gave 50 cards, didn't he? 100? But I preached just a little longer than I thought I would. So maybe we'll take the other, what, what, extra, all right? 100? All right, let's send a few people to the platform and bring them a massive wave. See the Lord Jesus here, every person in the building. You believe you again? If you may return, you're on the platform tonight, and do the very same things that he did when he was here on earth, where everyone will promise that you will believe in and accept him as Savior and here in the hand. Every person in the building. How many more now, every person in the building, that he did not do nothing and throw a fire in children first? Let's see how much we know the Bible. Okay. Good. And we know that when Philip came and found Nathaniel, he told Nathaniel who he was, what he was, and where he was before he came to the meeting. Is that right? What did the Pharisees, the religious people that day, say he was? That he was a fortune teller, a badger bug. What did Jesus say? You speak that against me, it'll be forgiven. But when you speak that against the Holy Ghost and he comes to do the same thing, it'll never be forgiven. In this world, the world will come. So there in doing that, he prophesied that the Holy Spirit will do the same thing that he did. That's what he said, the Holy Spirit will testify on me. And he will bring these things to your memory and will show you things to come. St. John 16, I believe it is, or 15. Notice. That's the scripture. Now, if you have risen from the dead, now I want to ask you, if the Lord has risen from the dead, which we know he has, he is the, uh, is the only religion in all the religions of the world that can prove that their father is alive. Buddha can't do it. Muhammad can't do it. No other religion can do it. The Christian energy can do it. Oh, sir. Even if that hundreds of us would raise that they said the race in the world, the world is. That's the ridiculous time to compare with the sublime. It can't be done. But we can prove 
the power of God set you to it, that Jesus raised from the dead, for he's here to do the very same thing. And the Mohammed said to me down there, one missionary, one missionary been there 30 years, and one one soul is of that precious jewel, just to preach in the world, give him the fact, but that's all that brother had ever known to do. Don't go find church in America, yeah? That one precious jewel. But when they, they said, let us see you preachers do the same thing Jesus has had to done, and we will believe in the way to do that's what they were waiting to see the Bible fulfilled. And when that was done, he literally and gave them their estimating out of that 30,000 or 10,000 of them was Muhammad. He had God there to accept him in his way. He'll do it live. Just let him have it. You can just beat and beat and beat and it'll never happen. Just turn it loose and let the Holy Spirit do it. He can do it. Now, when it's so called two minutes to the platform, it won't be too long for you to stand. When we get to his name, he's I'm going to ask every person here to be just as loving as you can. Be just as free as you can. And set me a little tight for just about 15 minutes. And be in prayer. Now, how many of you that does not have any prayer cards that's given to you today, and you know you're not there to be in the prayer line, upstairs, downstairs, wherever it is, but you believe that Jesus Christ will be with you, and you believe that you have a sufficient faith to touch Human, raise your hand. God bless you. Now just stay right where you are and start praying. Now does the Bible say, this is after the resurrection, that he is the high priest of our confession, does he say Does the Bible say that he is the high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmity? How are you going to touch him? He's got to bear record back. If you touch him, you wouldn't know you touched him. Is that right? Now, if you're here and not going to be on the prayer line here, you just sit in this field and be free to say this to God. God, look at me as a new man. And if that man will turn me not knowing him, and the Holy Spirit, that he claims that anoints the people, will turn and I love you, Lord, and I'll show you. Just let him turn to me and tell me, like our Lord did the woman at the well, and I'll believe with all my heart. I challenge your faith in Christ's name to do that. God said, prove me. All right. That was on to our cards. Up to one to a hundred. Well, let's, take, let's start at number one. Number one, X. That Mark X was number one. He has a card. Did you stand up? Number two, right over here. Did you stand up? Number three. You'll be all over the building. Number three, raise your hand so I can see you. Number three, that's number three. Is that the lady there? Number four, would you raise your hand? Such the people not yet see the movie, break down, they speak with you, they raise up their hair off. Number four, number five, that's number five, would you raise your hand? Who has it? That's number five. Raise up your hand, please. I'm sorry, lady. Six, seven, eight, nine, X number 10. Who has X number 10? Did you raise your hand? Number 10, 11, 12, 13. I'll see again, both downstairs and upstairs. Who here is six? and does not have prayer cards is going to be called into this line and would like to be prayed for and won't be to the union yet. Would you raise your hands again so I can get a general construction? Just so you're a general with everything else. All right, let's look this way and believe it. I do. Now, Jesus is passing through a place one time and a little woman touched his garment and he got weak. Did the Bible say he got weak? Verse 2, which is weak, which is saint went from him. Many people wonder why it makes you get weak. Do you know that that uh, Daniel had one vision and it covered him at his head for many days? Who knows that in the Bible? Bible reader? Yes. How many know that the virtue of the angel that was on the water at the pool of the dead in St. John 5, the first one being healed, except when he had faith enough to be healed, the angel even left the water. Let's see your hands. Sure, all the virtue left the water. And Jesus, the Son of God, said that he got weak. Verse 11, while he got up to 
from the 20 or 15 or something, well, as the line gets just a little closer down, we'll keep calling a few more as you see the line getting down. Now I get the cause. If I ever come again up your high, I hope you would like for me to come back, and I sure would like to come. I would like to set a meeting so we could say for about a month. So I could get a chance to pray for the people and then have different meetings, afternoon teaching, have lines like they did last night, and pray. This year is for massive prayer, massive meeting. This is to bring forth the presence of Jesus Christ. Now, as I said last night, that did you notice the difference in the American people? Got him on the platform, he was a little lady, had a wreck, he was hooked his mouth with that. You better be careful what you tell him. <laughs> and he back his mouth, but just as soon as I prayed, I seen she was here. I said, go take your braces out and turn. How many of you see what's happening now? So the little lady had a lamp on the side of her head. I felt something move under my hand while I was praying, and I went, ooh. Did you see it? The little lady had a girl here in the front of her, out here on the front of her. So I was praying, looked back, and the thing was down. Little dress, you standing there, his feet, you're in his feet. How the Lord dressed a colored man, bound down with a pair of his throat. As he moved him up, a girl coming down, drinking air on his feet, and he walked away. See, that's the way the American people want to lay hands on them. But that's not really the way you should do it. You know, Goliath said, Come lay your hands on my little girl and she'll live. The woman said, I'm not worthy that you come under my roof. But said, I'm a man with authority. And I say to this soldier, You go do that, and he does it because he's under me. And I say to this one, You go do so, and he does it because he has to obey me, he's under me. What was that woman doing? He was recognizing the supreme deity of Jesus Christ. He said, You just speak the word, my servant of the Lord. What did Jesus say? Now, I've never seen faith like that in Israel. That's what I'm trying to get to you people. Christ is here. So believe it. Africa, India, one supernatural sign, they're watching for it. They see that compared with the Bible. That settles it forever. All right. Now, as we pray, now I want, now it would be real loving. Now I'll tell you why. And to you brethren that were taking it, pictures, Christ said, don't take them now. See, this is the life. We were glad to hear that report. There was a lady here last evening who was a cripple sitting in the audience who also just come singing. That was sitting in the audience and she wanted to get into the prayer line but could not. And she just looked up and I told him to receive it and was instantly healed and walked out home. I understand the little lady with the polio here. I left in the room the other day passing through the building. I offered a little prayer for her, and someone tells me, I forget what someone told me, that she got a feeling in the foot and began to itch or something, and the little steps to the cross. That's God moving. Life is coming back. The curse being taken. See? Just keep on believing. That's all. You can better answer. Amen. That's good. I have so many reports. Now, to everyone here, you are total strangers to me. As far as I know, uh, right here is the two men sitting here that I know, and um, there's somebody, uh, the doctor, standing right down there, I know the doctor, and I know him and Mr. Wood and Mr. Vale here, are friends of mine that I know, and my son standing over here. My daughter-in-law, Mr. Wood, sitting back in this section here by the post. That's all that I know in the building now. But did you know that Christ knows everyone who sees him sit today and the doctor's right? I've seen him sitting there. But do you know that Christ knows each one of you? Now, here is the purpose. Now, don't lose it now. This is the right time. This is the purpose. Listen to me. Christ has healed every one of you, and he died at Calvary. It's your faith and his finished work. No matter what the condition you need, it's your faith in what he did. 
Now, the thing is, he's just accepting as personal here. So, if Jesus is here now, and you say, Jesus, come here and hear me. Well, he cannot do that. He's already done it. The Bible says he did it. He was already doing it. Did he? As far as he said, it's finished. He's already been wounded for your transgression. And they can start eating where already he is. The only thing he could do would be to call himself to be here. And how would he do it? They're a miracle. Now, are you the lady that takes the country this morning? I don't know if you're going to Now, being a little early, you can walk just a little bit closer if you were that lady. You're a stranger lady. And she, of course, wearing glasses. You know there's something wrong with her eyes, except they be reading like it. Person's house, 35, 40 years old, they actually, their eyeballs get flat and they move through the glasses. Of course, then, that's a regular procedure like your husband and girl or anything else. But she looked happy to me, and she's a stranger to me. I never saw her in my life. I suppose that's it, we're strangers to each other. If we all sort of people would understand things that they Now, there is a picture again of a Bible picture. This is from New Testament. Our Lord Jesus in St. John 4 was talking to a woman that came out to get some water at a well. She had never seen it. And she came to get some water. And when she got the water and started to put her on her head to walk away, our Lord Jesus said to her, Woman, bring your drink. And she being a Samaritan, and him a Jew, there was a law of segregation, so she said it's not customary for you to ask such. We are there doing the Samaritans and Jews. He passed a conversation with her, but he caught his spirit. And when he did, he said to her, he found out some trouble she had. And we believe in America, I know the Eastern idea is different, but we believe in America that she had five husbands. The Bible said she did. And Jesus said, the husband you got now is not yours, and you're living with him. So there must have been something wrong. And when the disciples come, it wasn't no disgrace for a man to talk to a woman in public, but they were astonished that Jesus talking to such a person. The Bible said they were. So if the Eastern idea is different from that, it's all right. Whatever it was, it was a woman talking. And the woman, he said, he contacted his spirit and he found where her trouble was. And he said, go get your husband. She said, I don't have no husband. All right. He's witness, you didn't have a husband. But Jesus said, you've had five and the one you have now is not yours. The lady said the truth. What did she say? Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Is that right? I watched what she went on to talk. Then she said, we know that when the Messiah coming. How many believe Jesus was the Messiah of God? He said, we the Samaritans, he was a religious person, he went to the church and those were laws anyhow. He said, we know that when the Messiah comes, he'll tell us this or all things. But she couldn't make out of who he was. He said, I'm here to talk to you. To speak of you. And she ran into the city and said, come to the man that told you these things. Isn't this the Messiah? Now, if that was the sign of the Messiah then, and he's the same yesterday and today and forever, it's the sign of the Messiah now. That is to the believer. But what was that sign to the big high Orthodox church then? A brother, a person brother, a theology brother, a media philosophy. It's the same sign to them now. We're around the world since you know more yet you see me, I can see me. I'm not going to die to say that. I'm going to raise you and I'll be with you even in the end of the world. I'll be doing the same thing right on down to the end of the world. Now, if that picture is true, as you know it is, then Christ could come down, if she is a believer, and reproduce himself again and find out what she's standing here for. Is that right? And if he does this, the woman could be a infidel. She could be a Nazi. She could be here for a free month. Watch what happens. How many of you live where that man will hardly to come and hypnotize you? They went to these army things on those people back like a dog and on the six of horses, or what they call it? Six horses, I don't know how to speak it right enough. Six horses, I believe it's called. And you are either to hypnotize these soldiers and make them bark like dogs and things, and somebody will hardly to come and hypnotize me. 
I'm under a mountain somewhere, and I thought that I'd still have to visit a devil at first. I looked around for a fortune teller. And I watched, I seen sick man in those eyes look at me. I thought, is that there? I turned again. I began to watch the window up, and I watched out there. I seen what the Holy Spirit said. I turned around where he was. I said, you child of the devil. How is the devil cutting your heart to come to this thing? God will be with you. And the next day, he was paralyzed and he was just a day and that's been about three or four years ago. He's still sitting paralyzed. Last Friday, Dr. Green said, that's all I know about the jury. Remember that man that night up here across on the Canadian line? They run up there and put on his prayer call a whole lot of things and he had two doing everything walk up there. I said, there's nothing wrong with you. But oh, yes, he is. Look at my prayer call. I said, that has nothing to do with you. I said, that's a prayer call. I said, there's nothing wrong with you. He said, oh, yes, he is. There's something wrong with you. And I said, well, maybe you have faith in the key. And he said, that's what it is, huh? And I turned and looked. I thought, I think I've seen a room open up before me. And there stood a woman standing looking down at two men. One of them had on a great suit with a red tie. Another man sitting across one had his back to me. There was a green spread hanging over the table. And I heard it say, and it's nothing but a telepathy. And we will prove it and show that he's wrong. And he belonged to a certain denomination church that I would not call the name. And when he came back and was drinking us, I said, Why has the devil cut your heart to do this? So I said, Man, aren't you ashamed of yourself being a preacher? And why aren't you shut the door of life and another man that's sitting right there in the balcony? Sitting there with that red tie on in the bloody seat, and you sit in the room like that and said that you'd go over and watch so and so on your prayer card. It's all for us, it was sent for you to me, me with the rest of it. I said, now the state and God fell down and grabbed me on the back one down my pants. And I said, the thing that you put on your prayer card, TV, and so forth, is on me now. The man died about a year later. That was the engine on Taylor. Many of you heard that. How many of you heard it? see your hands. Many of you don't see it. Certainly. We're not playing for it. The Holy Spirit. You do well then. This woman's a stranger. I never knew it. I never seen her in my life. God knows it. I don't. But I'm professing this. And my contention is that Jesus Christ has raised from the dead and he's just the same today as he was. He don't keep his word if he's God. He's got to keep his word. I believe the word in spite of the idea. Now, be over, be in prayer, and I want to talk to the woman just a moment. And if you'll perform the same thing in you that he did back there in the Bible time, everyone just promised if you believe and would accept anything that you don't need of, you believe he's here to give it to you. Is that right? If God will do this, it's a sign to you that he's here to give you just what you're asking for. The only thing you like is to believe. Now, let us look to the woman. Ladies. As the preaching and talking, the Spirit of, or the Holy Spirit in a gift, one gift is preaching, that's a danger. Another gift is prophetic, which is altogether a different gift. And to be preaching and switch to something else, which is another anointing but the same Spirit. You understand? Now, you and I have been strangers and never have met each other, and you being the first person here, I'm just trying to contact this spirit. It's exactly, the blank, exactly what I'm trying to do. Blank. Because you're a woman, I'm a man, and we've never met before, and here we are before several hundred people, and now God's word is at stake. That Bible, it says that Christ promised what he promised, that, that we, he'll do the same, he'll live in it, and he'll work for us to do the same things that he did, that's either the truth or the truth. Now, don't be afraid to put God's word to the state. But I perceive that you are a Christian because your spirit begins to feel rotten. See, the Holy Spirit is here, and now it's a gift. It's a brother and sister now. Things are changing. You're aware that something taking place just then. If that's right, just raise your hand for the audience to see. That's, did you ever see the picture of that line? That's what's right around you just now. Now the lady. If the audience can still hear my voice, she is a believer, a real believer. And I see her, she's doing something, but she's real nervously about something, like she's dropping something or something. She's bothered with nervousness. That's her trouble. She has a nervous condition. 
and she's all upset about something now. That is, she has been to a, a doctor, and that doctor was looking over her breath, and he found a place like that keeps gathering like a grove. Now, see, with that little white thing or something, he turns your back, and there's something on your back near your spine, and he says that you need an operation for it. That's just her. That is true. Do you believe? Now, something's here that knows you. I don't. Something knows you. He said, these signs are so far away in the dream. Come and let me pray for you. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, our Son, I bless this woman that she may receive every blessing she's asked for and send her home happy, rejoicing, praising God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless your loyal heart, lady. Go rejoicing, happy, and thank Jesus God. Would you come, lady? You believe? Now, as you raise from the dead, now you look this way, baby. The anointing is on. Oh, man. Oh, what a feeling. I feel just like it was that day when that, after two years, that little boy was sitting in the spirit, he raised in the dead. How many of the stories? Some man, a little big boy, laying there, hundred standing around, and I said, Thus saith the Lord. I saw these now, baby. In five minutes now, you'll be on the seat of the false prophet. There he raised and leaped to his feet, praising God, laying up today. He's crying. He can't lie. And he remains crying. Now the lady saying, here is another stranger. We don't know each other. But that's how it is your hand. Have faith now. Don't go out. Believe me. All right. If the Holy Spirit can reveal to me what you're standing here for, the very thought and desire of your heart, Will you accept it? You will. You know, as a man, I couldn't hear you. If you sick. And if you are, if I could and wouldn't do it, I'd be a brief. Not a man. If I could help you, wouldn't do it. But I can't help you. But I'm trying to do all I can to get in presence of him who can help you. Because you're my sister, you're a Christian believer. Right? Now the Lord said to Nathaniel, Behold, in his life, and he was no God. He said, When did you know me? said, before Philip called you, I saw you. Way away. What if I tell you I see you from way away? See? You're not from this city. You're from another city called Cleveland, Ohio. Right. Now I see a doctor up here. And a doctor's looking somewhere in the chest of the throat. He says it's a brother on the inside that's just been recently, and he set a time for operation, a huge demand for an operation. Is it? Yes. It has to be. Are you doing that? Yes, Our Heavenly Father, the little lady desires life, and I pray as I lay hands on her, that you will give to her the desire of her heart. I pray this prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Go on your way to happen. God bless you. Do you believe? All right, do you hear really that now? Someone was here in the audience that then I didn't touch it. Do you hear really that now? I saw the angel of the Lord, which is the Christ of God. It's a light. How many know that the angel that followed the children of Israel was a pillar of light, a fire. How many know that was Christ? How many know that he said, I come from God, I go back to God? Did he say it? And when Paul made him after the resurrection, what was he? Pillar of fire in the light. Is that right? That's the Bible says. That's what he is. I believe that. He says, all right, just the Lord. How do you do this? I don't know you, you know that. But we're saying to each other that God does know. Mm 
อาจจะซื้อเงินอีกแล้วต้องทำให้ตายมาเสียไปนะปราศรัยสิวรักษ์สิอนาคตนี้เยี่ยมคนนี้เนี่ยเยี่ยมสุภาพสุภาพไปบ้านมาสุภาพเยี่ยมสุภาพที่สุดาไปทำคนนี้ปัจจุบันนี้ปัจจุบันตัดเส้นยี่ปีเดียวเราพิจารณาว่าเป็นคนอินบริดาจะคนที่จะรำเอ็กจะรู้สักตัวแบบไหนที่มันเอาไว้ที่จะต่อเรื่องของอาการเรื่องของลาสิสิ่งที่ต้องรู้ก็คือจะลาสิสเรื่องนี้แต่เรื่องมาสิสที่จะขึ้นมาบนรถที่จะขึ้นมาบนรถที่จะขึ้นมาบนรถที่จะขึ้นมาบนรถที่จะขึ้นมาบนรถที่จะขึ้นมาบนรถที่จะขึ้นมาบนรถที่จะขึ้นมาบนรถที่จะขึ้นมาบนรถที่จะขึ้นมาบนรถที่จะขึ้นมาบนรถที่จะขึ้นมาบนรถที่จะขึ้นมาบนรถที่จะขึ้นมาบนรถที่จะขึ้นมาบนรถที่จะขึ้นมาบนรถ And he said, "I'm the resurrection life. You got things that need only your death to carry it. You can have a living that you need never die." He said, "You believe this?" He said, "Yes, Lord. I believe." He believed that he was what he said he was, the Messiah, and he is the Messiah tonight. I'm just a servant, but the angel who spoke to me and sent me here to get the people to believe you and be sincere when you pray. I said they won't believe me. He said by this they will believe me. This is given at birth. Is that the little baby boy? You are suffering with a, an arthritis. I see you can hardly get around at times. Then you have a uh, heart trouble. That is right. Then you have something that makes you sick. It comes from your right side. This gallbladder trouble, because you have a colic like the gallbladder. That's the thing. Now I cannot hear you. Neither do I know what to say. But something was talking to you. That wasn't me, because I don't know you. Now do you believe that? I know you talk to it. No one would be sure. Now. Not for a public show. God doesn't do things that way. But for the glory of God, that you might understand. He will be buying gifts. May I talk to her some more? She's an elderly lady, and I'd like to talk to her just a little more. Now the lady sees the door slamming again. Yes, I feel that sometimes the vomiting is driving with the gallbladder. And I see you. You're not from this city. You're from a a city that's got like a canal in it or something. The Spencerville. That's where you're from. And you live on a street called Main Street. Your number is four zero one. Your name is Lee Miller. You believe you could be a prophet, a servant? Let us pray. Oh God, you raised up the Lord Jesus. I pray that you heal this woman and make her well in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, sister. Have faith in God. Do you believe? Now, here is another story. A colored woman and a white man. This turns back to preach again to the Saint John for. And down in the south, we have a segregation between the white and the colored. And This makes the scene just right. And then Jesus let her know, though, that there was no difference. God makes no difference for all His offspring. I do not know you, lady. Here we are, man and woman, first time ever met in life, even a, a different race. But God knows us both. You are a believer. And if God will reveal to me what the trouble is, will you believe it? You will. Will the audience believe? May the Lord Jesus grant grant this. Little lady. Just a moment. There's a little boy. I thought it was a little lad. He said, 
I'm tired. No, it isn't here. No, here's just a little bow pound. Way over the corner. Papa, do you believe it's God to make your boy well? You said it's your brain going, aren't you? It's your hair. Your little boy has a rupture. That's right, isn't it, Papa? Mama, is that right? Stay with your hand. See, you touched something, didn't you? You touched your gun. Lay your hand over on the little lamb. Heavenly Father, in, in Christ's name, grant their faith is sufficient now to do that which they have designed in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said, I can if you believe. For all things are possible to them. Oh, you could just see what I'm looking at. It's a little lady sitting there just looking at me, and she's praying, and she knows that she has contacted the Holy Spirit. She's moving her lips, she's praying. She is not praising God, for she's been suffering with a throat trouble. She's got a little turban right on her head, she's got a little white thing. But it's not, isn't it, lady? And I see someone else holding to a throat. It's a lady sitting next to you with a round eye pad on. Has so trouble too. I'm speaking to you, Mrs. Miller. Why do you know who I'm talking to? All right. I never seen you in my life and never knew, but that's why I raise your hand. Oh, how we thank the living God for his goodness. For his mercy endures forever. Just ask faith. Just believe. Now, little lady, you sitting there with a flash your eyes from weeping. Something touched you, didn't it? You never touched me, but you touched him. And that big band that was put around your arm and said you had high blood pressure, that is right. What do you think they were sitting this to us? You had one around your arm, but it said low blood pressure. One was high, and the other was low. Is that right? It is right. Now have faith in God. You touched him. I challenge your faith to believe. Don't die. Just have faith in God. Pardon me, lady. I can only go just to keep showing me. All right, we're standing here as man and woman. Oh! You are for a very serious baby. You're standing for someone else, your brother. And that man is in a mental institution. And he's not here in this city, but he is in Cleveland, Ohio. In a minute, it's the truth, and you're his sister, and you come that I might offer prayer to your brother. That is true. I'm not reading your mind. That is true. Oh, God, our kind of heavenly Father, down there in that terrible place tonight, let the Holy Spirit deliver that man from his affliction and make him completely whole. Because of his loved one who's standing for him, I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Very may God grant it as you have believed, so may it be so. Oh my. Have faith. You didn't let him the little star came in your head. You should have accepted the concert a while ago. The light of God is still over you. But that first trouble you've been having is gone from you. So you won't have to worry about it no more. Huh? What do you think that next year has your this trouble? You think that the Lord Jesus can make you well do? All right, you may have it all, say that.
and the lady with her hands up to her face. She's got a fresh trouble. And the little lady that's wiping her eyes yet. But arthritis is gone also, sister. Amen. That's the way to do it. Her face. Go down. How do you do? Of course, you know you're in the presence of something besides a man. You believe it's the Holy Spirit? Be real reverent, everyone now. These diseases go from one to another. Now be real reverent, they won't let you stand much longer. But just be real reverent and see when it's going to please. Each one is a soul, each one's a spirit. And as you move, it, it has an interruption, you see. Because every one of you, this just place looks like it just know right where you're at. And this walking with all that is in you to help you, friends, so you, you cooperate with me and with the Holy Spirit. You hear that? Let us take this lady then, just a minute. Your main trouble is a nervous trouble. And it causes you to have trouble in your arm and in your limbs. That's right. And you're not from the city either. You're from Cleveland. Your name is Henrietta. Coleman is your last name. You live in an address called 8517 Cedar Avenue. Another thing that you might know that I'll be God's prophet. You got someone on your heart you're praying for. It's a man. The man is your uncle. And he's got cancer. Dying. And he's unsaved, and you're praying for his soul. Amen. You believe? Then we see what we've asked for in Christ Jesus' precious name. Have faith in God. What do you think something like that does that back trouble say? You think God will make you well? Sitting right on the side there. You think God will heal you? All right, you can have what you ask for then. Amen. You want to get over some of the trouble and be made well? Be healed? And go eat your supper. Be well and thank you. What if I told you you were healed saying that? Would you believe me? Would you die that with confidence in my word? Then go. The Lord Jesus made you completely whole. How do you, young lady? You're very young lady to be a meanie, but you are. But how about let you and I go to Calvary for a blood transfusion and be made well? You believe? Then thank you and go and be healed. Thank Jesus God. Heart trouble is a killer, but Jesus Christ is a savior. Do you believe that? Then go and be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's say praise be to God. Do you believe? Have faith in God. What about you in the balconies up there? You're not left to the room. Christ is just as great up there. I challenge your faith. In Christ's name, to look in here. Here's a young girl looking straight at me, sitting out here with a banister, kind of a heavy set girl. Do you believe me to be that prophet, sister? You're praying, what do you? If that's right, raise your hand so the doctor you can see. I've never seen you. But you're suffering with a back trouble. If that's right, raise up your hand. Now, do you believe me? As God said it, you believe it's Jesus Christ in your life tonight? Let me tell you how it happened. You fell off of a slide, Jenny. Is that right? Raise up your hand. Now you're here. Christ takes you out. Well. See? That lady sitting right behind you with a little white hat on. She has perfect contact with her. Is God the only thing that you have to trouble? Will you accept and believe things in the trouble? And Christ in close? In the breath. That's right, raise your hand. See? I challenge your faith. By the way, the man sitting right behind you said I was allowed to see. That's right, this is so raise your hand. There you are. Have faith. Oh, yeah. I challenge you. Amen. How do you do? We're strangers to each other. 
I don't know you, but God does know you, doesn't he? You agree me to be your servant? You suffer with breast trouble, too. That means you're hooked to that lady there, that spirit is going back and forth. Right. You agree? That's your husband going to think about there. He's going to believe you, you think? As an industry, he's still sick. He's got that trouble, have you? Looks you think that's exactly right. Yes, you can go home now and be made well. You can see? I've never seen you in the life of that tree. Now go on your road and God, tell your husband be well. Let's say praise be to God. You love him? Oh, how he wants to heal you all. There's many out there suffering with heart trouble too, ladies. They're just everywhere. Everybody with heart trouble stands to your feet right now. Stand to your feet every day. See, you can call them. Just the name standing to me stand right here just a minute. Have faith in God. Yeah, that's got a cancer. Cancer, stand up to your feet. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. There you are. Stand here just a minute. Have faith. Come, ladies. You believe in your God's prophet? Give the diabetes. Everyone with diabetes, stand to your feet. You see me standing. Have faith in God. Come, ladies. You stand here for heart trouble, say, please. Believe with all your heart. Hey, man, do you believe? Satan's going to lose this battle. We're all here. Something's got to take place. But they're not defeated. Don't you know? 